most mysterious creature in this country is known as the Zabadoo. You think there really is a creature like the Zabadoo? I never saw him again. Do you think your friend could still be alive? You gotta go rescue that poor guy. Me? I've arranged for a local guide to drive us there. Her name is Angie. The Zabadoo's mine, you got that? Odie, no! Don't go near it! John, great to see you. I thought for sure I was a goner. But then, the oddest thing happened. The Zabadoo picked me up and carried me off. It carried me to this cabin, the one we're all in right now. It took me in here and bandaged my leg. And then, Whoa. just when I thought things couldn't get any weirder, it spoke to me. I set your broken leg. You're fortunate I used to be a doctor. The Zabadoo used to be a doctor? No, a doctor used to be the Zabadoo. His name was Sam, and he was a retired surgeon. Years ago, he came to this area on vacation. In fact, he was a hunter, but he didn't like that some hunters were hunting where they weren't supposed to. Oh. There's this local legend about a creature called the Zabadoo. I never believed for a minute there was such a creature, but I, I figured it... You figured if you made yourself a costume and dressed up as the Zabadoo... I could scare them off, right? And that's what he did. He made a costume, and any time a hunter ventured where he wasn't supposed to... Ooh. Ah! 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 It's the Zabadoo! I'm sorry, Mr. Zabadoo! I'll never hunt this area again! I thought it was a great idea. And the animals around here liked it, too. He was such a wonderful man. I stayed around to help him out. When Sam passed away, I took it over. His cabin, his costume, his mission. That's wonderful, Lyman. A great thing you're doing, my friend. <laughs> Here, I'll help you out. Blow that thing you call a nose. Good. I'm gonna go out to see if there's any lunch left in Angie's vehicle. Wanna come with me? Didn't come with me. <laughs> So noble of you, protecting all these endangered animals. You make a great Zabadoo. Here, you didn't see the whole routine. I'm on constant patrol. And when I see a hunter where he shouldn't be... <laughs> boogie boogie. <laughs> <laughs> I got it, Buckley. I got photographic proof that the Zabadoo is a big fraud. If you publish that, you'll ruin the guys' whole routine here helping the animals. Yeah, but these pictures will be worth the fortune of that TV show. And besides, who cares about a lot of stupid animals anyway? Easy, boy. Hey, Mark, leave me alone! Got it. Hey, cat! You give me back that camera! Nope, I don't think I'll do that. We've got to catch that cat! The photos in that camera are worth a fortune! Get off me, ma! What is it, boy? He won't get away from us! I'm determined! I'm willing to put your life on the line! You think so, Dick? That vehicle, it belongs to Dirk Dinkum. It looks like Odie wants us to follow him. <laughs> looks like there's a detour up ahead. The blood must have gone into that cave. We've got him trapped. Good work, mate. Where's the camera? This is great. Just great. <laughs> oh, this is great. Just great. <sighs> I'll take my camera back, cat. <laughs> Another stupid animal always causing trouble. Another stupid animal always causing trouble. Hmm. You know what I've got a hankering for? Rotisserie Mockingbird. Bye now. I really don't oh. like this guy. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Hey, animals ain't so bad, Dinkle. Shut up, Buckley. Animals are only good for two things. Wearing them and eating them. Once I expose this Zabadoo hoax, I may come back here and bag me a couple of those, uh, what you call them? Endangered species. <laughs> And you're not going to be fooling me with that hokey routine. <laughs> All right, you can take off that ratty costume, fella. No, that's not the guy in the ratty costume. That's the guy in the ratty costume. Hi, Pinkham. How's it going? Jabaku! Jabaku! Well, now we know why he's called the Zabadu. Wait for me, mate! We all thought it was just a legend. And it turns out there's a real Zabadoo. Gee, he's not bad in the role. I don't think they'll be needing this. <laughs> because neither of them will ever tell anyone about what happened here. The Zabadoo? He's out of here. His job's done. Zabadoo! Zabadoo! I guess he's like Vito the pizza maker. Huh? Yeah, he shows up when he's really, really needed. <laughs> John, I can't thank you and Garfield enough. I want to spend the rest of my life helping the animals here, and you made that possible. Plus, you brought Odie back to me. Oh. Huh? Uh, you're... Uh. You're keeping Odie here? Well, of course. Huh? He's my dog. Yes. Yes, he is. John, you can't let... I mean... You... Here, Odie. Say farewell to your friend Garfield. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it, too. But hey, you're back with your buddy Lyman. That's pretty good, huh? Hi. Guess we'll see you around, fella. If I'm going to get you to your plane in time, let me just say goodbye to Odie. I know you'll miss them. But think of all the great fun you and I are going to have together. <laughs> Thanks for all your help, Angie. I wouldn't have missed it for anything, John. You're a good man. <clears throat> huh? Meow. And cat. Mm. Oh. Stay in touch. Please, don't look so unhappy, Garfield. The two of you are going home. Yeah, that's the problem. It's the two of us. I'm going to go upstairs and unpack. Hey, Garfield, how'd it go? Did you find Lyman? Is he all right? Yes, we found Lyman. Yes, he's all right. Oh, that's great. So, so why are you so glum? You look like you lost your best friend. Hey, where's Odie? Odie? I don't know any Odie. I'll fall when the days are short. Wow. Garfield, dinner's ready. It is not time to stay alone and despair. Gather with ones you love and care. Care. 
and share Don't despair Your parents and your friends Anyone dear Care and share It's time now To make peace and forgive Care and share Care and share Boy, you must really miss him. Well, I do too, but we have to get over it. This is probably the mailman with all the mail I had them hold while we were gone. Lyman! John, great to see you. You haven't changed a bit, I'm sorry to say. Neither of you. And I'm even sorry than ever about that. What are you doing? You left something important in Afghanistan, and I thought I'd retain it in person. Here. Hody! Oh, it's good to have you back. <laughs> Is that? Uh, no. I thought I heard. Ah, uh, never mind. What? Huh? I just have to face reality, Odie. You're gone for good, and I'll never see you again. Is this another fantasy sequence? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I looked at Odie's face, heard him sign, and I thought. He doesn't belong with oh. me. Sure, I used to own him, but now you own him. Garfield has no appetite. Garfield? Not eating. Oh, that's serious. Well, it looks like I've saved two more animals. Speaking of which, I have to get back to Franistan. You can't stay? Wish I could. Tell you what. One of these days, I'll hire a temporary Zabadoo to fill in for me so I can come back for a real visit. I'd like that. I'd like that a lot. So, Garfield and Odie are back together oh. again. You think it's just like it used to be? <laughs> there you go, boy. Go fetch a stick. Oh, oh, that's great, Odie. Here it goes again, boy. Fetch the stick. Fetch the stick. <laughs> no, tomorrow it'll be just like it used to be. Right now, it's even better. Okay, here it comes a big one now. Go fetch the stick. Go, boy. <laughs> mysterious creature in this country is known as the Zabadoo. You think there really is a creature like the Zabadoo? I never saw him again. Do you think your friend could still be alive? Do you think he's being held prisoner by the Zabadoo? You gotta go rescue that poor guy. Me? I've arranged for a local guide to drive us there. Her name is... Um, Angie. I was so excited when I heard you had a lead on how to locate the Zabadoo. Well, it may not work, but it's worth a try. Ah, buckle, right? Oh. Name's Dirk Dinker, world famous explorer. Oh, hi! I saw you on TV. Everyone does. Just wanted to warn you. The Zabadoo's mine, you got that? Get in my way of getting it, and you'll be right sorry. Mm. Watch this, Odie. John, the quivering tower of gelatin, will back right down. Get in my way and you'll be sorry, Dinkum. You've been warned. <laughs> when did John grow a spine? When he realized his friend Lyman might be in trouble, that's when... Don't pay any attention to him. Oh, I won't. Where's your car parked? It's an all-terrain vehicle, and it's parked right out at the curb. <laughs> it's right over there. And as we planned, I'm gonna take you straight out to the jungle. Just what I want. I wanna be home, I wanna be home. <laughs> I did like you said, Dirk. Now explain. Why did you want me to hide my cell phone in Angie's vehicle? Your cell phone's got an app on it, so you can track it if it gets lost, right? Right. Well then, we can track it on my cell phone. And wherever they go, we'll know right where they are. 
If anybody's gonna find the Zabadoo and get rich and famous off it, it's gonna be Dirk Dinkum. You think of everything, Dirk. <laughs> We have 10,000 acres of jungle, but people have only reported sightings of the Zabadoo in one small area. Take us there, and then I'll show you the way I think we might be able to locate that creature. <laughs> that must be your cell phone. Put it back where you found it. You think it's true that the Zabadoo monster is holding some human beings as prisoners? I don't even know if it's true there's such a thing as a Zabadoo. And if the reports are true, I'm not sure it's really a monster. Now, don't get separated, and let's not get too far away from my vehicle. Wow, we're like out here in the middle of nowhere. I wonder if there's a good pizzeria around here? Hey, what kind of bird are you? <laughs> I'm a Franistanian mockingbird. What does a Franistanian mockingbird do? What does a Franistanian mockingbird do? Whoa, that's not bad. Whoa, that's not bad. Okay, you can knock it off now. Okay, what? you can knock it off now. Hey, look, I'm getting really fed up with this. Hey, look, I'm getting really fed up with this. Hmm. Garfield the cat is the greatest creature on the entire planet, and everyone should give him lots of food and money. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're not allowed to lie like that. Ah! I'm sorry, we're not allowed to lie like that. Hey, that's not bad. Hey, that's not bad. Okay, you can knock it off now. Okay, you can knock it off now. <laughs> So what's this special way you have of trying to find the Zabadoo? That's it right there, Odie. He's got a terrific nose. But how does he know what the Zabadoo smells like? He doesn't, but he remembers what his first owner smelled like, and the Zabadoo may be holding his first owner prisoner. Worth a try, I guess. Hey. Up ahead is an area where the Zabadoo has been sighted. See those hunters oh. over there? They shouldn't be here. This is a protected area. No hunting is allowed. The animals around here are mostly endangered, species that could become extinct if they aren't allowed to breed. She means there aren't a lot of them around and we need to make more. So this is where the Zabadoo usually shows up? Exactly. When hunters are trespassing, he seems to just... Here he comes. Now watch. What's that noise? Could it be the Zabadoo? Ah, don't be silly. The Zabadoo is a fairy tale. There's no such thing as... Well, we won't see them around here again. There it goes. Maybe we could follow it back to its lair, or wherever it might be holding prisoners. It only seems to terrorize people who are hunting illegally. I'm guessing that's what your friend Lyman was doing. Lyman hunting? Oh, no way. You never know. I know Lyman and how much he loved animals. We lived together for years and I couldn't get him to kill a cockroach. What do you smell, Odie? Pizza? <clears throat> Tacos? <clears throat> Lyman? <gasps> <gasps> Oh. Odie, come back here! I usually don't run when there's no pizza or tacos, but in this case... This is the way this avenue went. Odie, I think he went up that path. <laughs> Odie! There's a path down into the canyon, this way. Boy, these extra long episodes can really wear you out. Uh, 
Odie, no! Don't go near it! Stay away from the Zabadoo! Odie doing something dumb? What are the odds of that? Odie? How does the Zabadoo know Odie's name? Maybe he's a big fan of this show? He knows because he's Lyman. John, great to see you. You haven't changed a bit, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> I've missed you too, boy. So, Angie, oh. it's nice to meet you. Great. But could you explain what you're doing in that costume? I thought you were a photographer. I gave it up. Huh? I have a new job now. What's that? I'm the Zabadoo. Oh. Boy, I can't wait to hear this explanation. Master Buckley, we gotta get to the Zabadoo before that arbuckle bout. Oh, I'm trying, mate, but the road here's a might on on account of there's no road. According to this, your cell phone and therefore their vehicle is about two kilometers down this here road. Oh, 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 I keep telling you, think them, there's no road here. They drive me. I'll have me a little look-see. But why didn't you write or call, Lyman? Just to tell me you were still alive. Do you see a phone here? Or a post office? I'm sorry, I, I guess I just didn't think you'd believe what happened. What did happen? Sounds like we're in for a flashback scene. Get comfy, folks. I'll try to interpret what he says. As you may remember, I came down here to get a photo of the Zabadoo. Well, the group I was with wasn't getting anywhere, so you know me. I took a chance. I came out here on my own one afternoon. Big mistake. No luck. In fact, I was starting to believe there was no Zabadoo, that it really was just a legend. When suddenly, I couldn't believe it. But there it was, and it seemed like it was 10 feet tall. Quickly, I pointed my camera at it, making sure I was very quiet, but... Oh, what a time for my camera to jam. Whoa! Bigger mistake. I ran like crazy, trying to get away from the monster. And since I wasn't watching where I was going, I ran right off a cliff. Biggest mistake. I guess I was lucky. Being caught running off a cliff lucky. Zabadoo didn't come after me. My only injury was a broken leg. Trouble is, I couldn't walk and there was no one for miles around. Help! Anyone, help! I was there for hours when someone found me. You must have been scared. I don't know the meaning of the word scared. Unfortunately, I do know the meaning of the word terrified. And some of us know the meaning of the words getting hungry. I thought for sure I was a goner. But then, the oddest thing happened.
salads, Canadian bacon, extra sauce. Other people put themselves to sleep by counting sheep. I count pizza toppings. I see pineapple, more sausage. Huh? The mailman's here? Uh-huh. Thanks for the alert, boy, but I've decided to take the afternoon off. No mailman annoying for me today. Extra cheese, extra, extra cheese, extra, extra, extra cheese. Huh? What? Yeah, that's right, Agnes, the house with the cat. I'm delivering there now. If I don't see you again, remember I loved you. Hold on. This is the dangerous part where I push the doorbell. <laughs> I'll get it! Agnes, I may be okay. I hear Mr. Arbuckle coming. Hello, Mr. Arbuckle. I have some letters for... What are you doing, scaring me like that? Huh? Huh? Oh. John's taking up mime. You don't know what mime is? I figured you wouldn't. Here, I had them prepare this brief educational video to explain it. Mime is an ancient form of acting that does not use words or speech and which dates back to ancient Greece in the 5th century BC. It is an art in which you convey a message through your actions and expression. A mime never speaks directly to the audience. Instead, he or she relies on the power of imagination. Now, take a cue from John and don't say anything for the next week or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me guess. You got fed up with the cat and you're running away to join the circus. What? Do I want a cup of coffee? Yes! You got it exactly right! Oh, man, I'm good! I'm really good! I've been taking mime classes for the last three months, and now I'm testing my miming abilities on people. Ah, well, here's your mail. Is that a bill from the Prime Rib of the Month Club? I don't want us getting kicked out. Ahem. <clears throat> Dear Mr. Arbuckle, our mime school has elected you Student of the Year. What? We have chosen you to represent us at the World Mime Championship that will take place in Paris, France, home of the greatest mimes of all time. Garfield, Odie, I'm going to go to France and win this contest as the world's greatest mime. <laughs> And to really get in practice, I'm going to live my life in mime. I won't say another word until the competition. Not sure why, Odie, but I have a feeling we're in big trouble. He's miming everything. He's doing an imaginary drawing with an imaginary pencil. And guess what? At the end of the week, John's boss is going to send him an imaginary paycheck. <laughs> and now he's making us an imaginary dinner. Huh? Oh, great. Imaginary lasagna again. Oh. We haven't had a meal with actual food in it for days. Oh. Mm. Does he think anyone would be stupid enough to go along with this? <laughs> enough already! <laughs> Your cat is fed up with not being fed up. <laughs> Odie. Give me the menu for Vito's. Here. That's right. Dial a phone. I'd do it myself, but I'm too weak from hunger. Vito's Pizzeria. Vito speaking. How may I help you? Uh, hello? Is uh, anybody there? <laughs> I guess there's no one there. 
Fortunately, I planned for an emergency of this sort. <laughs> A few months ago, I recorded one of John's better orders. Vito's Pizzeria, Vito speaking. How may I help you? Vito, this is John Arbuckle. Please send me enough food to feed my cat. Ah, oh, Senor Arbuckle. I will be right over as soon as I can borrow a large truck. <laughs> Problem solved. Oh. Huh? Buongiorno. Here is your bill, Senor Arbuckle. Hurry, hurry. Pay him in large bills, it's faster. He's paying him in imaginary money. Uh, please, uh, Senor Arbuckle, pay me for the food so I can get back to my restaurant. Eh? Is that supposed to be the tip? Silly joke you're playing, but Peter will not put up with it. If you do not pay, you do not get my wonderful food. Oh. <gasps> no, wait, wait. Can't you take an imaginary credit card or something? <laughs> if John doesn't give up this mime stuff, he's gonna have a couple of imaginary pets. <laughs> John's mowing the front lawn with an imaginary lawnmower. There you are, John Arbuckle. Where have you been for the last two weeks? Why haven't you been answering your phone? I keep calling here and someone answers, but no one ever says anything. Oh, student of the year, World Mime Championship? You've been studying mime? You're going to France for this contest? Well, good luck. Who's your partner? Not oh, your partner. It says here, all contestants must be duets. Two mimes in a team. You didn't read the back of the letter? You don't have a partner? And the contest is day after tomorrow. Where are you going to find a partner who can do great mime? <laughs> Oh, no, not me. No chance. No way. I don't think Garfield wants to do it, and that's too bad, huh? Would have been nice to win that big cash prize. Yeah, big cash prize. I guess you didn't read this part. It says the winner receives... Oh, wow. That's enough money to keep Garfield in lasagna for a year. Excuse me one moment, please. <laughs> Looks like you've got yourself a partner. How long have they been like this? One hour and 37 minutes. Oh, what is the name of their act again? The meaning of life. <laughs> life is apparently very boring. The next contestant is Jean Arbuckle and his cat Garfield. They will perform the famous mirror sketch. The 
best they have ever seen. Let us give them the trophy right now. Congratulations. You are the winners. The finest mimes in all the world. You shall receive the large cash prize. Wow. Thanks a bunch. He, he spoke. Contestants are not allowed to speak. The rules are quite strict. If you speak, and you did, you are disqualified. D -d 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 Disqualified? Oh. Oh. No large cash prize for you. Ushers, remove them from the stage at once. No, that's not fair. I only spoke after the performance. That doesn't count. I protest. I protest. When I need him to order pasta, he doesn't say a word. Now he talks. And they're all good. Some recipes contain layered noodles, cheese, oh, tomato oh, sauce, oh, oh. and onion. And sausage, don't forget sausage. Lots and lots of sausage. And of course, lots and lots of sausage. Oh. <laughs> no, I will not throw the stick so you can fetch it. Repeat, no, not. <laughs> No, can you not get the concept of no through that dense doggy skull of yours? I am not throwing the stick so you can fetch it. I am never throwing the stick so you can fetch it. No. Never, never, never. I love that and never. Never! And that's how we fold in the ricotta cheese. Oh, that dog made me miss the ricotta cheese. That's the best part. Hey, any part that involves cheese is the best part. Mm. Huh? Hey, Baco, fun! No, I'm just sitting here drawing, Liz. Why? There's a TV show on right now I think you'll want to see. Oh, I don't have time right now. I have a deadline, and Drusilla and Minerva are coming over, and it's then I'm gonna... It's all about the Zabadoo. The Zabadoo? Down in Franistan? As far as I know, there's only one Zabadoo, and it's in Franistan. I'll turn it on right now. Thanks, Liz. <gasps> now, we layer the lasagna noodles in a crisscross pattern. <sighs> I don't know why you people are watching me when there's wonderful programming like this on. Sorry, Garfield. There's a very important show on that I have to see. There are fascinating things to do and <laughs> you know, people, places to go. There are a lot of different ways to prepare. <laughs> 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 All right, Garfield. I didn't want to resort to this, but you're forcing me to use my secret weapon. Nothing will stop me from watching my favorite program. Ahem. Minerva and Drusilla are coming by. Minerva and Drusilla? <gasps> I hated to do it, but I have to see this documentary. There are fascinating things to do and many interesting <gasps> places to go in Afghanistan, but the jungles are filled with monsters and great danger. None of which are as scary as Minerva and Drusilla. <laughs> if anyone needs me, I'll be under here for the rest of my life. <laughs> the most famous mysterious creature in this country is known as the Zabadoo. Few have seen this elusive beast, but those who have 
We'll never forget him. We went out in the jungle, figured maybe do a little hunting, and we saw him, ten feet tall, all covered with hair. And you're sure it was the Zabadoo? Well, either him or this girl I took to my senior prom. It, it was like he was protecting the animals in that area, but I didn't stick around to watch. He was this huge, slobbery monster. And you're certain this was the Zabadoo? Well, either him or the guy who took me to my senior prom. Only one crew has ever been able to film these Zabadoo. We'll show you that rare footage later in this show. But it inspired Ooh. one man to travel here to Franistan. Dirk Dinkum, the most famous adventurer in Australia. They say he's never met the man or beast that he couldn't track or take. Uncle John! People are afraid something awful. This thing called the Zabadoo. Well, I'm here to stop that fear. I'm going into the jungle, and I'm not coming out without the Zabadoo, dead or alive. Uncle John? Uh, go play with the kitty. He's probably upstairs hiding under the bed. Kitty hat! <laughs> Afraid of? It's just two little girls. Am I gonna spend the rest of my life under here hiding from two little girls? No! I'm not gonna spend the rest of my life hiding from two little girls. What can they do to me? Kitty cat! <sighs> We're about to find out. I want to see what they do with me. We want kitty cat. We want kitty cat. Protects the animals of the jungle. This doesn't matter to dirt. Think of I mean, really. What do animals need protection from? <laughs> twins. Animals need protection from twins. thing to do to the pup, but it was either him or me, and I prefer it be him. <laughs> Dirk Dinkum has never failed yeah. yet on a mission. Can the famed adventurer Dirk Dinkum succeed where others have failed? Can he find the elusive Zabadoo? If I can't, nobody can. But I can. Dirk Dinkum never fails. Hi, Uncle John. <laughs> What are you watching? Uh, just a second, please. As I said, only one person has ever shot video of the mysterious Zabadoo. We'll show it to you right after we make you sit through about uh, 900 commercials. Folks, I It's a documentary about a creature in Franistan called the Zabadoo. The Zabadoo? He's that monster nobody hardly ever sees. Yes, well, I have a special interest in him because... Oh! oh. Uh, yeah. Well, I had this friend once, my closest friend, in fact. He went down there to try and photograph the Zabadoo. Wow! That's dangerous. I'll say. I... I never saw him again. Oh, that's awful. It sure is. His name was Lyman. <laughs> Lyman knew Odie? Lyman used to own Odie. Come on, we'll have milk and cookies and I'll tell you yes. all about him. I thought you owned Odie. Well, I do now, I guess. You see, Lyman was my roommate. He was a great guy. Really loved animals. I knew him back when I was in high school. Then I didn't see him for a while until one day... <gasps> Gee, I wonder who that could be. Hopefully someone delivering pizza. <clears throat> Lyman! John, great hey. to see you. You haven't changed a bit, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> John, I need a place to stay. I'm cold, I'm hungry, I'm weak. Take me in. Sure, Lyman. You know my home is your home. But my sandbox is off limits. Is that all you have, the one suitcase? Just that 
and my friend. Huh? I'm not 100% certain, but uh, it could be a dog. It took a while for Garfield to accept the concept that he'd be sharing his living space with a puppy. But eventually he came to accept it. Slowly but surely, Garfield realized that it can be nice to have a dog around the house. Huh? <laughs> Look at that poor and dignified mutt. All slobbery and mindless. It's just disgusting. Oh dear, you're so cute. Have a steak. <laughs> <laughs> Bow wow. wow. Arsh. Yip, 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 yip. It turned out Lyman was a pretty good photographer. He took some great mm. pictures of Garfield. <laughs> now look this way and say, lasagna. <laughs> Lyman, why do all the photos you take of Garfield have him either eating or sleeping? Oh. Um, <sighs> uh, forget I asked that question. It's forgotten. <laughs> Finally, one day Lyman got a job. He was going to go far, far away, to Franistan, to try and photograph the Zabadoo. You think there really is a creature like the Zabadoo? What they're paying me, I'll bring back a picture of King Kong disco dancing with Godzilla. Anyway, take huh? care of Odie while I'm gone. No, <laughs> I can't take you with me, boy. You stay here and do everything John tells you. John, tell him to live somewhere else. Here. I want you to wear my lucky hat, which you hate. If you're lucky, I won't bring it back. Ooh. But thanks. So we went out and headed for the airport. And, well, that was the last time we saw him. They called and said nobody could find him. He went off on his own into the jungle to try and get a picture of the Zabadoo and... Wasn't that TV <gasps> program going to show us a photo? It was a video someone else managed to get of the Zabadoo. Come on. <laughs> oh. Camera crew from France spent weeks trying to get video of the mysterious creature known as the Zabadoo. Oh. Here, as we promised you, is the few seconds they were able to get. Wow, that's the Zabadoo. Oh. I can't see him. Do you think your friend ran into that monster? Mm, I doubt it. I'm not even sure there really is such a creature. But if there were, huh? Lyman probably never... I see him! Oh, him too! Oh, 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 John, is that anything like the hat you gave your friend Lyman? That is the hat I gave my friend Lyman. Now you say you've heard that the Zabadoo may be holding some human beings captive in his lair? That's the rumor. And if he is, I aim to go in and rescue them for a prize. What does it mean? It might mean there's a chance Lyman is alive and being held prisoner by... a monster. <laughs> we'll be back with more right after this commercial. Boy, is this ever a rotten time for a commercial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mysterious creature in this country is known as the Zabadoo. I had this friend once, my closest friend, in fact. You think there really is a creature like the Zabadoo? I never saw him again. Now you say you've heard that the Zabadoo may be holding some human beings captive in his lair? It might mean there's a chance Lyman is alive and being held prisoner by a monster. It's unbelievable. Lyman has been missing all these years. Everyone thought he was gone for good. And now that, that monster over in Franistan is wearing my hat. Looks better on him than it did on you. The hat I gave Lyman. Do you think your friend could still be alive? Do you think he's being held prisoner by the Zabadoo? 
I don't know. I don't know what to do about this. John, not knowing what to do about something? Whoa, there's a novelty. Priscilla, Minerva, I'm going to drive you two home. I have to put huh? all my attention on this. Okay, Uncle John, we understand. Hmm. This is a baffling mystery and a matter of life and death. At a moment like this, there's only one thing to do. And of course, some people like mushrooms in their lasagna. That is so wrong. They take up so much space it could be occupied by sausage. Well, at least I got out of it without those twins dressing me up in some silly outfit. <laughs> Why did I have to say that? Okay, get it over with. Make it look all pretty. In the middle. What size you use you wear? wear? He we should take so him to the smoke color. Uh -huh. He huh? looks adorable. Here, Garfield, see how good you look well, now. You know, they're annoying, but they are right. I do look kind of fabulous. How does he expect me to get my usual 14 hours of sleep if he's gonna do that all night? Oh, hey, I know you're thinking about Lyman, but... Uh, could you hold it down a bit? No. <laughs> yeah, huh? on behalf of all your mice, I was about to suggest the same thing. Aww. I've been listening to the whole story about this fellow Lyman and the monster called the... Zabadoo. What? I don't know why they named it that either. You gotta go rescue that poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> Me? Go to Franistan? And battle a monster? Hey, why not? I could be a hero like that one I like in the movie. Oh, no. Of course, I'll need to dress like an adventurer. There, how do you like my adventurer outfit? Huh? Uh, Garfield, we don't see anything. Come on, use your imaginations. <laughs> oh, cool. Call me Muncie Smith, bravest of the brave. I'm off to Franistan to rescue Lyman. Now, how am I gonna get there? <gasps> I know. <laughs> this will be my airplane. Stand back. Right! I'd better make this an airstrip! Oh. Ah, better. Hey, Garfield, <laughs> wait! Take us with you! Why not? <sighs> Hop in! Yes! I am the Cha Cha Cat. I like to dance, although I'm fat. to get to Franistan in this fantasy of yours. I know a shortcut. It's a little out of the way, but it'll get us there fast. I like to dance, although I'm fat. The sighting of the Zabadoo was right about here.
your dinner. She's a coming right up, my friends. Oh, great, huh? Pookie. It's supper time. A personal-sized pizza for Signore Arbuckle. A oh. puppy dog-sized pizza for Signore Puppy Dog. <laughs> and huh? Garfield says the pizza for Signore Garfield. Oh. Hey, I distinctly recall ordering a large. Oh, oh well. Bon appetit, Pookie, my gastronomic friend. Look at that yummy, cool yummy, teddy bear, yummy. Dad. Eat your pizza before it gets cold, Jack. <sighs> oh, that was a nice, tasty pizza. On the small side, but tasty. Oh, what a shame, Pookie. You haven't touched your pizza. Well, we can't let it go to waste now, can we? <laughs> Boy, Dad, that's the neatest looking teddy bear I ever saw. I wish I had one like that. Really? You think other kids would want one? Sure. What's that, Pookie? Oh, now you're hungry. Well, I guess we'll just have to order another pizza then. Oh. Hey, I remember you. Arbuckle, right? How much for the teddy bear? Uh, I'm sorry? The teddy bear. I want to buy it. Oh. What? Uh, no, you can't have Pookie. No, 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 no. Not for all the lasagna in Italy. I'm sorry, Mr. Allwork. My cat oh. loves Pookie. And, huh? well, I just can't take him away because your son wants him. I don't want to keep it, Arbuckle. I'm CEO of All Work Toys, a very large company. I want to make duplicates of it and sell them around the world. Here's how much I'll give you as an advance. Are you allowed to have that many numbers on one check? Uh, Mr. Allwork, you have a deal. Pookie is going to be a bestseller, Arbuckle. You and I are going to make a bundle. Hear that, Pookie? I always knew you were destined for greatness. What's that? You want to celebrate with five more pizzas? Well, if you insist. We'll have that duplicated and returned to you in no time. Take good care of him. What did you call him, Pookie? Well, we measured and study every bit of him. Here is the duplicate prototype we have created. He's... he's perfect! No, it isn't. Kids today have computers. They want high-tech, state-of-the-art. Does take the original back to Arbuckle? Professor, I want you to upgrade and improve this toy. You know what to do. Indeedy I do. I shall give you the teddy bear of the future. And sales of the new toy known as Robo Pookie are setting new oh, records. Huh? They just went on sale this morning and already thousands have been sold. I'm going to be rich! <laughs> and I'm going to be even richer. I bought commercial time in this news broadcast. Oh, Fluffy, why do you just sit there all day and do nothing? Are your children bored with their teddy bears? I sure! Well, here comes the teddy bear of the future, Robo Pookie. Huh? 
Roomba Pookie can sing, dance, exercise, play games, clean your room, and speak 17 yeah. languages. <laughs> Roomba Pookie is the best nanny ever. And so the princess married the elevator repairman, and they left happily ever after. Goodbye. I don't think you should see this. Roomba Pookie is your child's very own private entertainer. You definitely shouldn't see this. Stay in here until this is all over. To be or not to be? That is the question. That's Robo Pookie, coming soon to a store near you. You're gonna love me and buy me. Whoa! This is awesome, Mr. Allwork. There was nothing wrong with the original Pookie. Does. Let him have the one I brought. Here you are, sir. Huh? I'm Robo Pookie. Who wants to play with me? <laughs> Two playmates with one brain between them, and it takes batteries. <laughs> I've had enough of this imposter. <laughs> The nerve of trying to improve on the real Pookie. Except no substitutes. Each one has a computer chip to download software updates and to communicate with other Robo Pookies. It's great, Mr. Allwork. I can't imagine how anything could go wrong. I was just trying to help. Huh? Who is that? Huh? Do you know what time it is? Yes, it's 4 or 6 a.m. in New Delhi, India. It's 2 36 in the afternoon. Would you like to think of pain? In here, he won't find us. No way! No, no, this is the real one, the good one, the one who doesn't do anything. Pick a card! Any card! Yeah, leave us alone, let us sleep. But I am your friend. I just want to help you and entertain you. <gasps> he looks just like me. Huh? He is. I salute you, a worthy forebear. I kiss <gasps> your feet in respect. I've been trying to get people to treat me like that for years. I will follow the wishes of the grand forebear. Great. The grand forebear says he wants you to let us get some sleep. As you wish, I shall remain here and bask in the greatness of the Grand Forebearer. Fine. You stay there and bask while we go back to bed. I cannot keep your glory all to myself. Attention, fellow robo -pokies. I have found the Grand Forebearer. Repeat, I have found the Grand Forebearer. Robo-Pookies of the world, use your global positioning systems to track the location of my transmission! Hmm. Huh? <sighs> it's 5 a.m. Who's ringing the doorbell at this hour? We are here! We are to the Grand Forebear! We are here! Leave it to 
the cat. Attention, my subjects. I command you all to follow me and the handsome cat. Ah. Repeat, follow me and the handsome cat. Do you understand? Yes, a glorious morning! I got a call that a lot of robo-pookies were being returned to my factory. But Dad, don't toys you make get returned all the time? Yes, but usually they don't march in by themselves. <laughs> They're all coming back! Every one of them! Every one of them that we made and sold, I'm going to have to give refunds on every one of them. Does that mean I'm not rich? You'll be lucky if you can afford a yo-yo. Huh? I, I should <gasps> never have gotten into this pookie business. I like mine. That's the prototype we made, the one that didn't do anything. Yeah, I'm glad I have it. Why? What do you do with it? I don't know. Just love it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well... At least I made one kid happy. And I guess I realized what I love about Pookie. He's a lot like me. Yeah, he doesn't do anything. Great morning. It's not Monday, and I got my usual 19 hours of sleep. <laughs> and John has breakfast ready. The only thing that could possibly ruin this day is if Nermal shows up. As I was saying, the only thing that could possibly ruin this day is if Nermal shows up. Hmm. Hmm. Huh? Where's Nermal? He's what? not here. What? He's oh. not here. What do you mean he's not here? Didn't he get a copy of the script for this episode? Right here, see, on page one. I say the only thing that could possibly ruin this day is if Nermal shows up, and then he walks in and says, Yes, Garfield, it's me, the cutest kitty cat in the whole world, blah, blah, blah. So where is he? Remember the last episode? You mailed him to Abu Dhabi. Oh, right. <laughs> that was good. So, I guess we can't do this script, right? Guess not. Okay, everyone, let's strike the set. Huh? We're not doing the script, Odie. No, I'm trying to figure out what we can do to entertain all these people who are watching us. <laughs> No, we're not doing that either. We're going to answer some of my mountains of fan mail. Could I have one mountain of my fan mail, please? Coming up. Postman, could we have a mountain of fan mail for Mr. Garfield, please? <laughs> Here's your mount. <laughs> Herman, if you're going to be on camera here, we need to touch up your makeup. You don't touch me! You're always doing terrible things to me. Dropping me in trapdoors, flinging me over the house, putting live cows in my mail truck. Oh, but that's just huh? on the show. In real life, you don't like to torment mailmen, do you? <laughs> All right, then, go ahead. Uh, perfect. Well, thanks. I should learn to trust you more. <laughs> okay, Odie. Grab a letter at random. <laughs> Thanks, Odie. 
Dear Garfield, when will you stop giving that poor mailman a hard time? You mangy cat signed the National Mailman's Union. Oops, <laughs> wrong address. That wasn't for me. Let's move on to the next one. Dear Garfield, would you share your lasagna with me? No. Next. Ah, here we go. Dear Garfield, I have this assignment for school. What is the difference between cats and dogs? I was wondering if you could help me here. Signed, Damien. P.S. I love your work. Thank you, Damien. I love my work, too. All right, kids. No talking or texting in the classroom. Got it? Good. Here we go. Here we see the dumbest creature in the entire animal kingdom. A dog. I said no tucking in the classroom, and that includes barks of disapproval. And here is the finest living thing that ever existed. A true marvel. A cat. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. You're too kind. Thanks, Rosie. That's enough. Here's the next part of our lesson. Hi, guys. I'm home. This is the person who feeds the cat and dog and has somehow deluded himself into believing he is their master. Observe how each of the pets reacts when he comes home. The dog becomes hysterical and noisy and slobbers all over his feeder. Ridiculous, isn't it? Now let's look at the same scene with the cat. Notice how unlike the dog, the cat remains cool, calm, and collected. Ah, big, fat, hairy deal. Notice how the cool, calm, and collected cat is cool, calm, and collected. He doesn't make a ridiculous fool over himself like certain dogs do. What do you mean there's more to the scene? I showed the important part. No, I'm not going to show the rest of the scene. Hey, 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 no! And how's my furry little friend today? Oh, meow, meow. Oh, meow, meow. Oh, he just loves having his little tummy rub. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Ooh. Who's a good little kitty? Who's a good little kitty? <laughs> All right, enough of this. Stop! Cut! Grr! Oh, so you think you made me look bad, do you? Well, you did. Now it's my turn to make you look bad. You all know that stupid game called Fetch the Stick? Well, here's what happens when you ask a dog to fetch the stick. You want to fetch the stick, Odie? Yeah. Okay, Odie. Go fetch the stick. <laughs> Huh? Good boy. You want me to throw the stick again? Dogs not only fetch the stick, they insist on fetching the stick. Oh. Again. And again. <laughs> See? Utterly pointless. Now, what would a cat do when the guy who feeds him, and not enough, I might add, throws a stick? You want to fetch the stick, Garfield? No. Okay, Garfield, go fetch the stick. <sighs> Come on, Garfield, fetch. Notice that no matter how many times he's asked, the cat will not waste his time fetching the stick. Mm. Just fetch the stick. Go fetch the stick. Please fetch the stick. It's just one little stick. You just go, you get the stick, you bring it back. How much time could that take? The cat will never fetch the stick because he knows there's no point in fetching a stick unless it's got, like, a lollipop attached to it. Please fetch the stick. Please, 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 please fetch the stick. I just want you to fetch the stick. Here. Right there. See? It's not so hard. Anyone can do it. Hey, if you wanted the stick, you shouldn't have thrown it away. <laughs> and continuing on the same topic, here's a letter from Sam Funny Name from Made Up Place, Nebraska. He asks, what do cats and dogs do all day? Well, Mr. Funny Name, cats sleep. 
Dogs chase their tails. Cats eat. Dogs chase their tails. Cats sleep. Dogs chase their tails. Do they ever catch them? Oh, that's the best part. Watch. <laughs> Meanwhile, cats eat. Well, Odie, I think I've made my point. Odie? Odie! <clears throat> Dear Odie, my mother says cats are much cleaner than dogs, but I think dogs are cleaner. Which of us is right? I'll handle this. Your mother's right. Mothers are always right. The dog is a notoriously filthy creature. Watching a dog rolling in mud is a revolting sight. Ah! Odie! Bad dog, bad, filthy dog. Look what you've done. Why can't you be as clean as Garfield? He's always clean and spotless. See? What do you have to say to that, grimy one? Huh? Play more of the scene? No. There's nothing more to see. There's... Yes. I am always so clean and spotless. The door. Could it be? It is. Delivery from Vito's Pizzeria. Yes. Odie, remember I said I wished you could be as clean as Garfield? Forget I said that. Okay, so maybe I'm not the most delicate eater in the world. There's the understatement of the year. Normal, where have you been? Where did you send me? Hmm, Abu Dhabi. Yeah, and that's where I've been. <laughs> Where's the set? Why aren't we doing today's script? We had to cancel that script because you weren't here. I've been answering all my fan mail instead. Fan mail? You get fan mail? Of course I get fan mail. Mm -hmm. I get lots of fan mail, see? Well, that's awesome, Garfield. Hey, I want to answer some of my fan mail, too. Could I have my fan mail, please? Postman, would you bring Nermal's fan mail to the stage? <laughs> Betcha Nermal doesn't get fan mail like us. <laughs> <laughs> Exceptions. <laughs> Don't you touch me, Garfield! You're going back to Abu Dhabi, Nermal! Let's see how much fan mail you get there, Nermal! <laughs> well, I guess that's the end of this episode. If you enjoyed it, do me a favor. Don't write a fan letter, send an email instead. I don't have to carry those. I really liked it. Finally, we had an episode of this show where I didn't wind up looking foolish. idea that I like hot dogs. Another one. I'm sorry, pal. I'm a lot of hot dogs. Here's your bill. Here's my wallet. Garfield, I said we could stop for a light snack. 244 hot dogs is not a light snack. They are if you leave off the chili. Oh, oh, oh. What, uh, 
Good afternoon, Mr. Edge. I keep telling you, Joe, call me Tyler. I'll have the usual. <sighs> Did that man say he was Tyler Edge? I didn't hear a word after sorry I'm all out of hot dogs. <laughs> Here you go. One six sausage sandwich. Thanks. Mr. Edge, Tyler, I don't have change of a thousand dollar bill. Keep the change. Buy yourself a house. <laughs> yeah. That is Tyler Edge. I didn't hear a word after six sausage sandwich. Oh. Mm. Cartoonist, huh? <laughs> oh. What are you drawing? <laughs> oh, nothing really. I'm kind of doodling, you know, looking for a new comic strip character. You're Tyler Edge, aren't you? <laughs> well, I'm not Tyler Edge. Mm. I'm the Tyler Edge. <laughs> Tyler Edge, Tyler Edge. Hmm. That name sounds familiar. Odie, do you know who Tyler Edge is? Of course not. You never know anything. Wait here. Hey. Sorry, I need to borrow your computer for a second. Tyler Edge, Tyler Edge, Tyler Edge. Ah, here we are. Tyler Edge made his first zillion dollars when he was 16 years old. He quickly built the world's largest empire of video games, cartoon shows, comic books, and major motion pictures. They call him the man who knows exactly what today's young audiences want to buy. Thanks. I just had to look that up. The way you draw is kind of interesting. Tell you what, what did you say your name was? John Arbuckle. Oh, not a good name. But okay, tell you what, bring me a concept, and if I think today's audience will go for it, I'll make you a very rich man. Huh? Ooh, I give you one tip. Draw and write what you know. Oh. Mm. Guys, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. I want to go right home and go to work. Okay, but on the way home, could we stop for more hot dogs? I'm thinking maybe a college student who gets stung by a spider and develops spider abilities. Nah, no one would ever read a comic book like that. Huh? John is having this thing called writer's block. Do you know what writer's block is, Odie? It's when you stare stupidly at a blank page for days and forget to feed your adorable pets. <laughs> a gerbil. A crime-fighting gerbil. No, no, a horse. A and set in the Stone Age. <laughs> no, two horses and a sailor. And the sailor's a robot! <laughs> and they're all fish. <laughs> and radioactive! It's been done. <laughs> I'm a failure! A failure! I can't come up with any new, fresh ideas! <laughs> come on, Odie. Let's give him a new, fresh idea. Why? Us, of course. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I get it. You think I should drop a comic book about you guys? The man is clear on the concept. Oh, it would never work. A comic about a cat who eats lasagna and sleeps all day? And a dog with a long tongue? <laughs> who would ever be interested in something like that? If I took an idea like that to Tyler Edge, he'd throw me right out of his... I give you one tip. Draw and write what you know. Huh? What you know? Ah. <laughs> I could do a comic about a cat who eats lasagna and sleeps all day. Yes. And a puppy with a long tongue that fetches sticks all the time. Yes. And I could set it in the future and make you both zombie penguins. No. <laughs> You're right. No zombie <sighs> penguins! This is the greatest idea in the world. <gasps> and I have so much material for it! <laughs> Thank you for agreeing to look at my idea. I hope you like it. <laughs> if I like it, the world will like it. Lay it on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about a fat orange cat. Hey. <laughs> And uh, there's a pea brain puppy. Uh, here are some drawings I did. They're on paper. 
Well, yeah, drawings are usually on paper. I can't relate to paper, <gasps> Arbuckle. I have to see Ooh. things animated. Let's go to my animation department. Huh? <sighs> oh, you mean you're going to have your team of animators animate my comic strip? <laughs> That's fantastic! Team of animators? Don't be ridiculous. Huh? So we got rid of animators years ago. It's all done by computers now. Why pay people to sit and draw all day? Can you believe it, guys? You're going to be animated! Us? Cartoon characters? <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh-huh. Yeah. We're working on having the computer create a solid hologram of a character, but that's in the future. Right now, it's building computer models based on your drawings. Oh. All right, done. Now let's see what an episode might look like. No, I will not go through the stick so you can fit. Boring! I think it's pretty good. <laughs> well, that's because you aren't me. First thing, the color of the cat is all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe blue or beige or... Hey, polka dots are popular. They look like I have measles. Wait, wait, pink! Whoa! Uh -huh. Pink is very big this year. I'm hearing they may make the sky pink. Do you think Garfield oh. should be pink like that and... I like it. I like it. <sighs> now we have to do something about that voice of his. I want some lasagna. Eh, it doesn't fit him. I'll try some different ones. Here. I want some lasagna. 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 But I know what we need. A celebrity voice. I thought I was a celebrity. It's very popular these days. Animated characters voiced by movie stars. I'll be back for more lasagna. I'm starting to really not like this. Well, okay. Now, what about Odie? Huh? I'm thinking let's lose the dog. <laughs> Hasta la vista, Odie. <laughs> but, but Odie is an important part of the idea. Uh, nobody wants to see dogs. How many hit cartoon shows can you name that have a dog? <laughs> All of them. For that matter, I'm not so sure about a cat. <laughs> No, 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 I don't think so. Wrong, definitely not. Maybe a cat, but a different design. Couldn't we just let Garfield be Garfield? Wait, uh, I have it. I have it, Arbuckle. The most awesome today vision. That's it, that's it. Is right. Tyler. What is it? What is it, Arbuckle? It's the idea that's going to make me another jillion dollars and you a couple of bucks. I think I'll take my idea somewhere else. Yay, John. Wait, you can't leave. You're not getting my full vision. Here, here, I'll create a solid hologram of them to show you. I thought you said that process wasn't perfected. <laughs> well, it isn't, but I have to make you see what I see. See? See how awesome it is? <gasps> no! It's horrible! Get rid of it! Get rid of me! I get rid of you! Let's get out of here. Yeah. Is he gone? He destroyed the computer that projected his hologram. You'll never see him again. Good. From the neck down, he was pretty ugly. My entire computer animation department is destroyed. It'll take like years to rebuild it. 
What'll I do till then? Ah, uh, I don't know. Maybe hire huh? some human beings who know how to draw? You just might be on to something, Arbuckle. <laughs> Lucky my drawing survived. I'm going to go look for someone who will like my idea enough to keep it the way it is. Well, good luck, but I think you're wasting your time. What do you think, guys? Oh, I don't know. Odie, do you think anyone would watch a cartoon show about a cat that eats lasagna and a puppy with a long tongue? Yeah, me neither.